Hey guys, today I'm going to be attempting to make a fuzzy sock elephant plushie. I say attempting because I've never actually made this plushie before and going into it I wasn't sure how things were going to work out, but in the end I'm really happy with it. Because of the nature of this video being a bit more experimental and the fact that I was unsure during a good portion of it, I don't recommend following it as a tutorial because I skip things that are basic and I've explained in past videos. If you have experience making these plushies, you could easily recreate what I'm doing, but I'm not comfortable enough in my methods and decisions to say that what I'm presenting here is the most effective way to make the plushie. So with that being said, let's get into it. I started off with a single grey fuzzy sock, but I did end up having to use a bit of another. Good thing they come in pairs, right? In an ideal world, all my designs would fit on a single sock, but that's not always possible unfortunately. I'm starting off with the body. You've most certainly seen this base if you're familiar with my channel. It's part of the cow, pig, and rhino plushies. As usual, I'm making the front legs longer than the back legs so I could bend it into a sitting position and stitching around the sharpie line I drew. Of course, the first stitch I took had to get knotted as I was securing the thread. I started with the body because the head kind of scared me. I wasn't exactly sure how to create the ears, both creating a shape flat enough out of this material and securing their raw edges to the head. Also, I had no idea what I was doing with the trunk. I wasn't sure if I should sew it on or make it as part of the head, and if I would be able to make it narrow enough. But that's all worries for later. Right now I'm just carefully backstitching around. Anyway, after sewing all the way around, I cut out the plushie. Then I cut a slit in the heel of the sock, which not only gives us a spot to turn the plushie from, but also smooths out some of the fullness in the back when we close it for a more natural shape. I used the hole to turn the plushie inside out, making sure to poke out all the legs, then I stuffed it. As you can see, this is what the plushie is going to look like when it's in its final position. But before we stitch it into that shape, we have to close the hole in the back, which I did with a basic running stitch. Then I used a combination of lather and whip stitches to secure the plushie into the sitting position, making sure to smooth out the chest area a bit so that the front legs separate further down the plushie. I just think it makes it look more realistic that way. I forgot about how these sorts of plushies commonly have standing issues, and so you have to pull the front legs down more than you think, so I didn't do that. It wasn't a huge problem, but I still wish I'd done it. That was actually one of the problems I was having when I first developed this design. You can see it quite clearly in my pig plushie video. It's funny how, especially when I'm a bit out of practice, things don't really change. After quite a bit of debating over what was the best way to create the head, I ended up going with this shape on the toe of the sock, incorporating the trunk into the body of the head. I wanted it to hang down like a real elephant, but I did end up changing that to curl upwards. You'll see, but it kind of reminded me of one of these things. Don't ask me to pronounce it. I think if I'd made the trunk narrower, it would have helped. Anyway, I've stuffed the head and arbitrarily placed the seam at the side. I think at any place it would have been equally as disruptive to the shape, so that's what I chose. Then I traced some shapes for the ears and sewed those.
I wasn't keen on just whip stitching the raw edges of my pieces to the side of the head, but I really couldn't think of another way to attach them. If you find yourself in a similar situation when making a plushie, just try to keep it really secure and stitch a distance away from the raw edges. We don't want the fabric to disintegrate when we pull on the ear. It's still not the most secure, but this plushie isn't going to be handled a ton. I was also worried about the ears not being flat enough, but I think it turned out okay. It just flares out at the seams, which I'm okay with. Now that I had the ears attached, I could stitch the head to the body. It really shows here, but I think the head is a bit small in comparison to the body, especially from the back. I think stuffing more would fix that, nothing really with the pattern. I know my stitches look really large and messy here, but I went around twice to make up for it. I think it's really cool how this plushie doesn't have a ton of extra pieces to sew on, and most of the work is done when making the head and the body. It makes it feel like it's going a lot faster, and it's super cool to see it come together. One of the last things I did was glue on some eyes. I wasn't sure which size bead to use because I think all three of them could have worked, but I ended up choosing the medium size. I didn't anchor stitches under the eyes to create dimples like I usually do, which admittedly makes the plushies look really cute, but I was too lazy too, so I just used a lot of glue and really pressed them into the head to try and fake that. Lastly, off camera, I stitched the trunk into a more curved position, as I mentioned before. And there you have it, that's how I created this elephant plushie. Honestly, I'm surprised it turned out as well as it did, because I had no idea what I was doing the whole time, and I was just guessing on what were the right things to do to achieve certain effects while sewing with a sock. Other than what I've already mentioned, I'm not super happy with the trunk, but I can't place what's wrong. Maybe it's too short or too fat, I don't know. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. This video was so much fun to make, and I'll definitely be making more like it, so feel free to subscribe if you're interested in that, and I'll see you guys next time.